I thank you everybody for joining the, you know, this discussion today. It's the largest uh, component manufacturer in, uh, in South Africa to the automotive industry. The topic that we want to discuss today is, is automotive manufacturing and more specifically uh, the case for localization pre uh, and post COVID. So looking at our, our agenda uh, for today, uh, firstly, I'll hand over to Theo to make some uh, opening observations uh, before we look and talk about uh, the localization specifics. Um, and, and we need to talk, you know, before we can talk localization, we need to put the automotive industry in perspective, the way we, we experience it now, pre-COVID, post-COVID, and the future, um, et cetera, which we believe is, um, and that sets the, the, you know, the basis for the discussion on localization. Um, and then we'll have, we will share a brief case study before we make some uh, concluding remarks. So Theo, over to you. Afternoon, everybody. Welcome. Maybe I must just frame if we go to the next slide before I lead into this. It's very clear for me, uh, listening to the previous speakers, that we're very, very uh, fortunate uh, that we contribute between 12 and 14 percent of GDP. We've not seen a decline in our manufacturing contribution percentage to that automotive manufacturing contribution and distribution. Is 50% of their GDP, so almost 7%. And I do see a very big difference between us and the previous speakers is that the platform for partnership between us and government has already been formed. It's been in the industry installed through industry bodies for many, many years. And the reason for that is the huge amount of capital investments that we need to make. So we need to have policy clear, clarity and surety long before we make those investments. So I think the automotive industry can be used as a platform on how do you actually uh, develop a government uh, partnership. And a big example, for instance, is I think we were one of the few industries that were privileged in the lockdown period to be consulted on how we lock down, when do we reopen, and also what is the support measures that we get, but also what is the level of participation that we allowed to. We were allowed to even operate in our automotive components business as a level four a classified participant during the lockdown. And our battery businesses was declared as essential services. So that partnership arrangement platform is an installed base. We also a contributor, a positive contributor to the trade deficit. We are actually a trade earner, foreign currency earner. You'll see in our slides, that currently more than 60% of the products that we make are exported. And with the new case study that we will show in this presentation, where we uh, secured new business with Ford and a partnership arrangement for their new models, uh, that the vehicle export percentage in South Africa can grow to the 70-75% per uh, levels. And that's obviously very positive. So we've got a very different uh, case uh, than the other businesses. The platform part partnership and uh, even the legislative requirements in the support measures that we get from government in the APDP, uh, there is a precondition where our customers are, t are legislated to target 60% local content and a BEE level uh, supplier contribution to qualify for incentives as a level four. So we've got a very, very different policy framework than the other speakers. I'm not going to go through everything on slide number five, but as we all know, COVID and how we respond to COVID is going to change our lives forever. And our industry is deepening localization. And I would just like to leave the audience with two acronyms uh, to understand our industry. Uh, the one is uh, QCD, and it's quality cost and delivery. And as you would know, South Africa had a very bad quality record in the quality of vehicles that we've produced. We've managed to address that over time. And today, a lot of our customers win the JD Powers Awards for the best vehicles manufactured in the world. So that's a very important. You also can remember the Toyota days where the CEOs and owners of Toyota had to apologize in the US for some deaths that was caused by an accelerator stucking and people getting into accidents. Then 
the cost portion is always very important, but because we are in a weakened currency, and we do have the benefit that our raw materials is available in South Africa. Our business is built around commodities. Those commodities are available in South Africa. And with man, machine, and method, we turn them into local components. So we always have a good price position. But where the focus with COVID has shifted to is to the D, is delivery. Managing risk and supply risk is everything for our customers. And that's the nature that's changed today, that they want to all shorten supply chains. we got to do agile manufacturing. If you want to be able to quickly respond to a customer's change demand, you need to be too closer to your manufacturing and the response time need to be as short as possible. So speak, let's put a big focus on localization and be able to respond to the market quicker. In the last couple of years, ESG has become very important, environmental awareness, but in the COVID environment, the S is very important, safety. And they all need to be able to verify the safety standards, back to work regulations that we have. And fortunately for us, corporate South Africa, although very different, maybe sometimes on the government view, are still seen to have very, very good governance. Uh, especially if you're a listed company on the JSE, uh, they do see that the governance interaction in businesses in South Africa is very high. And even with international providers of capital, we always get a big tick from the governance point of view. And we need to roll that out into the government environment as well. I will now go to uh, Shurt. We'll take you just through sort of the out for the South African production and why do we believe uh, that we're very, very well positioned to be in a U-shaped recovery with deeper localization and give you four as a case study on how we've managed to achieve it and ability to possibly create three, th three and a half thousand jobs. Because I think that's all of our joint focus is to get South Africa working and keep South Africa working. Shoot over to you. Well, thank you, Stia. Um, so looking at the, the outlook for the automotive um, industry and production in, in South Africa, pre-COVID, we were very, very positive. Um, and the question is, you know, do, does COVID, you know, detract from that or does, does COVID or does the, do the fundamentals actually improve? Um, and basically, our conclusion is that there will be a U-shaped recovery and we'll explain that in detail um, and that we will, from a manufacturing point of view, will be able to avoid um, an L-shaped recovery. A lot of that recovery is driven by new uh, projects that are being launched by all of the OEMs in South Africa over the next uh, two to three years. The majority of those projects are actually volume up projects, so not just replacement of existing volumes, but all, but certainly you know greater production and manufacturing levels based on new uh, platforms and new markets or markets uh, that are currently being served by factories elsewhere in the world that's uh, relocating uh, to South Africa. Um, during COVID, we were certainly very disconnected to the market um, and had you know, some uh, difficulty you know, understanding where the future would go, what the, what the future demand would look like, uh, local export, et cetera. Uh, but I think uh, coming out now, we're very much connected to, to the market, although we still uh, concerned about our ability, or somewhat concerned about our ability to to produce, um, you know, just be just because of health and safety issues. Certainly, from a market perspective, we have a very good understanding of of demand. So the impact on uh, on on the products that that we that we manufacture, uh, clearly, I think everybody globally uh, expects a reduction in in vehicle use. Uh, maybe not the total number of vehicles, but certainly. Uh, less use of vehicle, people not going into work every day, maybe every second day, and certainly from a wear part, aftermarket tires, uh, etc., it could be, you know, an, an L-shaped recovery. Um, certainly from an automotive component um, and vehicle manufacturing point of view, um, we do anticipate to avoid that uh, that L-shape. Um, and funnily enough, at least from our energy storage business, the less you, you use your car, the more likely it is that you will need a repla replacement battery uh, sooner. So everybody will be with the, the typical uh, acronyms around recovery, V, U, and L shaped. Uh, I think we've seen a couple of V-shaped recoveries globally, especially in China, which is which has bounced back quite uh, strongly. 
Um, I think the, the majority of the industry view for automotive manufacturing globally, and I'll show the regions just shortly, um, is that we're probably in a U-shaped recovery. So 2021 in terms of total vehicle production globally uh, will be less than 2019 levels, but certainly that we'll start seeing that recovery through in uh, the second half of, of 2020. So just to put some numbers to it, uh, this is uh, you know GDP driven. Uh, there's a very strong link between GDP growth or GDP decline um, and vehicle sales. Um, and uh, in some of the industry leading uh, consultants, this one is sourced from AT Carney, um, you know, show vehicle production uh, regionally down for 2020, anything between uh, 33 and, and 16%. Um, and then looking into, into the future, uh, that the recovery, we're looking at by region, Europe, will not achieve uh, 2019 levels, will still be down on 2019. Uh, North America will also be down. China uh, might be might be on par and similarly. And I think South Africa would certainly from a, a vehicle sales perspective uh, be in uh, in the same in the same region. So the, the big difference between this um, the general outlook for the market um, is the actual vehicles that we produce and the actual projects that are planned for South Africa and the volume delta up for all of those projects. And I'll hand back to Theo just to cover that in a little bit more detail. Good. Yeah, I think without going into too much specifics, we do believe that we in this U-shape recovery, and we are very fortunate that part of the COVID effect on vehicle manufacturing is greener products. Strangely enough, the more green we put into a product, especially a vehicle, uh, you know, more engine management systems to reduce emissions. That's all good for our health and safety. Uh, more um, environmentally friendly products from a manufacturing point of view, the costs go up. So it gives us a combination of volume and, and value up in the manufacturing. And we just show you in slide number 11 what we focused on during the crisis. Obviously, we were a little bit like a chameleon. We kept our eye totally focused on the now, but we also had to create our future vision. Uh, you should joke, he said 2020 is a uh, perfect vision, but we managed to come up with a 2022 vision. And that comes from a commitment, particularly from Ford in South Africa, to have a basket of products supplied from a local supplier. And we're fortunate that for all of our seven companies in our business, we've secured uh, the commodity supply to them. And it's driven, as I said, by government legislation who puts the onus on vehicle manufacturers to at least target 60% local content. And I think that's a big differential. If it's installed in the structural design with government support and policies, and we work as a partnership, that it's much easier to achieve so it looks like a lot of the other industry still needs to establish that base into, into, into their business. If I go to the next slides, especially if we talk on, 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 you know, why is the manufacturing brace going? I would just like to leave you with one takeaway with this. We're not focused on just local supply. Our focus 40% local, 60% exports. And I think it's going to be very difficult in the manufacturing environment to sustain sustainable long-term growth if you lose the export market. And I think the fact that we are very, very well positioned in South Africa to export, we show there in bullet point number three with the securing of the new business that actually 70 to 75% of the vehicles that's going to produce from 2023 in South Africa are destined for export markets. It seems to be going to be a hub for South Africa for internal combustion engines, not the old ones, the more new generation Gen 5, Gen 6, Euro level 6 emission standards. And because of the technology shift trends that might happen to, for instance, fully electric vehicles, all of our customers manufacture that closer at base to home. And the reason for that is they can influence demand-side stimulation in the regulatory environments that they operate. And therefore, South Africa is going to be a particular hub 
for the manufacturing and internal combustion engines, but the efficient ones, but also like commercial vehicles. And in the world, world economy, where businesses are smaller, you have more entrepreneurs that self-employed, there's a big shift into having a dual vehicle that supports your daily uh, commute, but also makes it possible for you to trade with it, but it's also possible to use it for leisure. And as soon as a vehicle fall into that sort of three category uh, or, or satisfies those sort of three categories, that it's possible for us to be in a niche market where that niche market is growing strongly. And then I want to just emphasize what the other uh, presenters brought about, you got to have the technology. So in South Africa, where we don't have the technology in the automotive industry, over years of partnership arrangements with overseas companies, we've managed to secure uh, the technology to be applied within South Africa. That's particularly true for our automotive components business. But we are very fortunate in the late 80s already because of the mining requirements, again, driven by health and safety requirements on the mines, that we were able to develop a much more friendly and safe battery that's used for undermining lighting in the mining cap land. That forced us into getting to start-stop technology. And as that start-stop technology today, it helps us to expand our own IP internationally. So I think it's important, it's very important that technology development, your ownership of your own intellectual property in regards to technology and to leverage that in an expansion as where manufacturing growth are coming from in the local market in South Africa. 